In the last video, we did some optimizations, speeding up our transaction import process while also reducing the memory usage by removing the flash method call for every persist. Because of that, our manual transaction creation process is broken because we are now only persisting and not flushing. For example, if we open the browser and try to create a new transaction manually here, so I'm going to do test, let's select some date, enter amount, category, click create. We see that it seems like it worked because we got the 200 status, but nothing is showing on the table. The reason for that is because we removed the flush method call from within the update method on the transaction service. So where we call this create here, we also call this create on the transaction controller where we manually create the transaction. And then this method calls the update method and we had the flush method call here that was uh, syncing with the database and we removed that to optimize the performance in the last lesson. So now we need to fix the store method on the transaction controller as well as the update method because these two use the same update method on the transaction service. Now there are multiple ways that we could refactor this to fix the issue. One way is that we could create a middleware that basically wraps the entire request within a database transaction and does the flush at the end. But that may not be ideal because we may not want to run database transactions and call flush method for every single request because not all requests may need to sync with database. Another way is that we could inject the entity manager in the constructor of this controller and then call the flush method after the create and update method calls. That would work, but then the controller would know about the persistence and database, which I want to avoid. There are a few more options and the solution mainly depends on preference. We could create a base entity service class within the services directory. So let's add a new class here. We'll call it entity service or rather entity manager service. This is going to inject the entity manager in the constructor. So we'll do protected entity manager, entity manager, and let's set this to read only. And then we can define a flush method here. So we'll do public function flush, and this will simply proxy or defer the call to the entity manager. So we'll just call the flush method on it. Let's set the return type to void here. And this looks good. Now our transaction service can extend this entity manager service. So let's go to transaction service. Let's scroll up. We'll extend the entity manager service. And let's get rid of this constructor because we no longer need it. So within the controller, we could call the flush method on the transaction service. So we'll do this transaction service flush. And we can do the same thing on the update method. And in fact, we can do the same thing on the delete method as well. So let's get rid of the flush method call from here. So let's do the same thing for the category and receipt service classes as well. So let's open category service and we're doing flush method calls here as well. So let's get rid of it from here and also from the delete method. And then we'll extend the entity manager service. Let's get rid of this. Let's also do the same thing to the receipt service. So we'll extend entity manager service. Let's get rid of this constructor and we'll get rid of this flush method call. Let's search for flush. We have it in the delete and let's adjust our category and receipt controllers. So let's do the category controller first. We'll do this category service flush and we'll do the same thing to the store and also to the update. Let's open the receipt controller. And let's do the same thing here within the delete. So we'll do receipt service flush and we'll do the same within the store method. All right. So one thing I want to mention is that this will also depend on your application and the structure of your application. So it is not necessarily the only way to do this thing. You can do it in any other way that you feel comfortable with. Another way that you could do it is by passing a flag here like true or false that basically determines if it should also flush or not. But I prefer not to do that in methods because then we need to have that extra parameter on every method that needs to do persist and flush as well. I prefer it this way because now flush is sort of decoupled 
from the create, update, and delete methods within the service. You could also have slightly different structure. You might be using repositories or you might be using Entity Manager directly in the controller. If you do, then you don't need to abstract anything away this way. You could just call the flash method on that Entity Manager. So again, like I said, it depends on your app and your structure. You need to see what makes sense for your specific application and also for your own preference. Before we test things out, there is one more thing that I want to do. Instead of injecting the entity manager in uh, entity manager service, I want to inject entity manager interface because I just prefer interfaces and that way we are not injecting a concrete class, but an interface instead. So what we'll do is we'll change this with entity manager interface. And this means that we need to adjust our container bindings entry for the entity manager. So let's open container bindings. Let's search for entity manager and we need to replace this with entity manager interface. And now we need to adjust the code everywhere where entity manager is injected in the constructor. Instead, we need to inject the interface. So let's search for entity manager and then maybe dollar sign to see where it's injected. We have transaction import service. So we'll replace this with the entity manager interface. Let's get rid of that. Next, we have register user request validator. Let's replace it there. Let's remove this. Next, we have user provider service. Let's inject it there. And we also have it within the container bindings. So let's replace it there as well within the clockwork entry. And there is one more place where we use, which is within the Expanis console app. We are getting the entity manager instance through the container this way. So we can replace this with entity manager interface and we need to import it here. So we'll do use doctrine ORM entity manager interface. All right, so let's test this out. Let's close all of these things here. Let's open the browser. Let's try to create the test transaction again. And this time it works as expected. Let's edit it. We'll change it to test two. That works. Let's delete. That works as well. Let's create it again. And this time I'll upload a receipt. That works as well. Let's delete the receipt. And that works as well. Let's create a new category here. We'll call it test. That seems to have worked. Let's uh, sort it by created at. And sure enough, we have it right there. Let's edit it here. So we'll do test two. That works. Let's delete it. That also works. And finally, let's also test the user registration. So let's log out. Let's do sign up. Let's fill in the form with fake data. I'm using the fake filler uh, browser plugin. Let's click register. And that seems to work as well. All right, so our little refactor was successful. As I said before, there are different ways this could be achieved. I just wanted to show you and use inheritance as an example since we covered that in the series. Cool, so let's see what else we can refactor. In the transaction import service, we're calling this clear method and passing the transaction entity class as an argument. This works and is not an issue in the version of Doctrine ORM that we use, but it has actually been deprecated and will no longer be supported in Doctrine ORM version 3. The suggested alternative is to detach entities directly from the unit of work. If we open the Entity Manager class and search for the clear method, we see that if the entity name is given, it triggers this uh, deprecation notice. If we open this GitHub issue link here, we see that the alternative is suggested right here. It basically gets the unit of work, gets the entities from the identity map, and then loops through all the entities and then calls the detach method on the entity manager for each entity. So let's copy this and put it into a method within the entity manager service class. So let's go back to the code. Let's close this out. Instead of calling the clear method on the entity manager, what we can do is that we can inject entity manager service directly because we have that class. And then we can replace this with entity manager service. Let's change it here as well. And we just need to implement this clear method now. So let's create this method. Let's change this to entity name. And let's paste in the code that we copied from that GitHub issue. Let's change this to this entity manager. We'll change this to entity name. And let's change this to this entity manager as well. 
Now we should make this uh, nullable because uh, we may not always get the entity passed to this clear method. So let's set this to null by default because we're calling this twice here, right? One from here where we pass the transaction entity class name and one where we're not passing anything. So we need to have this support where we don't pass anything. If the entity name is null, then we can simply defer the call to the entity manager. So we can do this entity manager clear and return. Let's test the import of 1000 transactions. Let's select the file, hit import, and sure enough, import works as expected. Great, so before we wrap this up, I want to add a quick little improvement to our transactions table. This involves a new column and a property on the transaction entity. Right now, we have no way of knowing if the transaction was reviewed by user or not. And I think user should be able to mark transactions as reviewed or not reviewed. Maybe they want to edit the category and mark it as reviewed. So they need to be able to distinguish between reviewed and not reviewed transactions. So let's add a new property. We'll open the transaction entity. Let's scroll up here. We'll edit right after ID called private bool was reviewed. And we'll mark this as a column with name was reviewed. Let's also set the default value to zero here. So we'll do options, default, zero. Let's create the getter and setter methods for this. So we're going to scroll down and do public function was reviewed, returns bool. So this will simply return was reviewed property. And then we need to have a method called set reviewed. So we'll do this was reviewed equals was reviewed and return this. Next, let's add the new controller method to toggle the review status. So let's open the transaction controller, scroll all the way down, and we'll add a new method here called public function toggle reviewed request request response response. This will return response. Then we need to get the ID from the arguments, which means that we need to inject the arguments as well. So we'll do args ID. Let's inject that in here. We can actually copy this part right here. So let's put it here. Then we can call some sort of toggle reviewed method on the transaction service. So we'll do this transaction service toggle reviewed and pass the transaction entity as an argument. Then we'll do transaction service flush and finally return response. Let's create this method. This will return nothing, so let's set the return type to void. Next, let's just set the reviewed to the inverse of current was reviewed value. Great, so next we also need to pass the was reviewed flag to our UI when loading the transactions. So let's open transaction controller, let's scroll up to the load method, and let's add a new line here passing was reviewed flag. So we'll do was reviewed, transaction was reviewed. Then let's add a new route for this toggle reviewed method. So let's open web.php, scroll down here, and we'll just duplicate this and add slash review here and call toggle reviewed method. Let's now generate the migration and run it so that we actually have the was reviewed column on the table. So we'll do php expenis diff that worked let's open that migration and let's adjust the query so that was reviewed is added after the id field so we'll do after id so let's do php expenses migrate and that worked let's open the table to confirm it's there and sure enough we have the was reviewed column and the value is set to zero by default all right, so the final step is to build the UI component to basically load the new column in the table and maybe add a new button to be able to toggle the transaction as reviewed or not reviewed. I don't want to spend time writing UI code in the video, so I'm going to do it off the recording and show you the final result. And we're back. As you can see, I made a couple of adjustments in the UI. I merged some of the action buttons into this one uh, gear icon button so that when clicked, it opens up this way, giving us all the three options. So we can still do edit, delete, and upload receipts, and everything should still work the same way. Then next to it, we have a new button that allows us to toggle the review status. By default, all transactions are not reviewed, as you saw before in the database, so that's why you see the text all bold in here. 
But if I toggle one of them, you see that the bold text goes away and the check mark becomes green. This indicates basically that this transaction has been reviewed by the user. If I click it again, then we mark it as not reviewed. You can of course adjust the UI to your liking. You don't have to use the same UI. All right, so this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. Until next time, happy coding.